we got a water service interruption notice on Tuesday, so we decided to go camping. The trailer is still in storage, but we can sleep in the jeep or in the tent. We got our bergspots ready. This is a Swiss made canvas tent we bought in the mid 1970s to go for weekend trips. It served us well on our two week Iceland trip in 1981, where the only dry spot was inside the tent. Even back then, Ursula was unmistakably the navigator. Welcome to our escapades, Ursula is the navigator. My name is Dieter and I am the wheelman. Now 45 years later, we are still enjoying tent life at the Finlayson Point Provincial Park. We know Highway 11 well from North Bay all the way to Temiskamin Shores. This time we are reviewing the off-road opportunities along this 150 km stretch and we went for an evening off-road ride on Red Squirrel Road. We arrived in North Bay around 3 in the afternoon to get supplies for the days ahead. At kilometer 35 it is the first public rest area. Now one week after the May long weekend the rest area is open. All along the way are the most impressive road cuts. Some display a colourful pattern of rock formations. At kilometer 60 we passed the Martin River Provincial Park and Logging Museum. We have visited this park and museum a few times before. We passed Gramps Place and Rabbit Lake Road. This is another service road we explored in previous years. Have a look at the video in our library. Then shortly after, a moose along the highway. Turns out that this was the only wildlife we saw on this trip. At kilometer 100 is the Finlayson Point Provincial Park. Time to set up our base camp. The park is on the northeast arm of Lake Temagami, less than a kilometer south of Temagami. The big difference between Martin River Provincial Park and Finlayson Point Provincial Park is the proximity to a fly-in and sightseeing service where a float plane takes off right here. It is a spectacle which you should not miss, unless you want to sleep in past 9 am. The camp was ready for our return at 11 pm. But three hours earlier, we decided to visit Red Squirrel Road, only a few minutes north from here. Have a look at the video in the library from previous year. The pond is right where we pulled in from Highway 11. This is likely a peace lily and seems to bloom early. 
moving on to the river that flows into Net Lake. We crossed the bridge and stopped to get a closer look. The heavy winds destroyed all audio recording. The sun was low and blinding at times and the dirty windshield was only half of the problem. We came to the closed gate at Eagle Lake Road. We knew that there must be a pond with a lodge. That's what the beaver houses are called. After returning to Red Squirrel Road, we found the pond. As expected, the road was gated and the mosquitoes were waiting for us, all of them. The beavers are active, fallen trees everywhere. We saw them in the big pond, but they were too far away for a picture. The mosquitoes made the stay unpleasant and we packed up. Back on the road, we passed the washout with the collapsed culvert. There is lots of water flowing. After all, it is still early in the year. The bright dot on the horizon is the moon and the forest is illuminated with our off-road light. The sunset was about 45 minutes ago and tomorrow is full moon. That means it is time to publish a new video. We try to get out a new video with every full moon and new moon. The next day we took a look at Moose Lake Road. The Moose Lake Road seems to be a very popular snowmobile and ATV trail. It is a network of roads, some of them end at the gate. We ended up at Loon Lake, where we returned to Highway 11 via Portage Bay Road. Back on Highway 11, we crossed the Montreal River and then through Latchford. This clip is from our trip in May. So is the next one, where the weather didn't play nice. After Latchford is Cobalt and the Heritage Silver Trail. Not to be missed, this is an amazing journey into the history of mining. Take a look at our story in the video library Heritage Silver Trail, we are 100 years too late. Before we entered Latchford, we passed the exit to the Roosevelt service road. We spent over three hours on this amazing off-road trail. Some parts required good ground clearance and a saw or axe to clear the way. This story will be told in our next video. And then we reached Temiskaming Shores. This is from the lookout before entering the town. 
Temis Coming Shores is an amalgamation of New Liskert, Haleybury and Diamond. New Liskert has all the services, but Haleybury has our favorite restaurant, the Whiskey Jack Beer Company. We headed back to the camp where the firewood is waiting to be lit. The kindling is from my workshop where I'm building an off-road camping trailer. The firewood in the back is from a local store. We packed up Friday morning and headed back home. Blue sky, some clouds and the intense green from the trees made the drive very enjoyable. Thank you for watching and we'll see you out there.